NASA has announced the four astronauts who will travel around the moon in Artemis II. So this is the second mission in the Artemis program, obviously. Their aim, to put a man and woman on the lunar surface before the end of 2025. The four astronauts include three Americans and one Canadian. Their mission will take them further from the Earth than any human has been since Apollo 17 flew back in 1972. CBS News senior space analyst Bill Harwood joins us now. Bill, let's talk about these four astronauts. Who are they and why were they chosen for this important mission? Well, you know, they really are the cream of the crop. And if you think about it, the astronaut corps is already made up of super achievers, right? So <laughs> yeah. uh, these, these folks clearly stand out. Reed Weissman, the commander, uh, has been on a long duration flight aboard the space station. He's also served as NASA's chief astronaut. Uh, Victor Glover is one of uh, only four active duty African-American astronauts in the current program. He's a veteran fighter pilot, an, an incredibly accomplished aviator and astronaut. He's also flown aboard the space station. Christina Cook, you know, she's she's the woman who did three all-female spacewalks a, a few years mm. back and has six spacewalks to her credit, putting her number three on the list of the world's most experienced female spacewalkers. And then the fourth crew member is Jeremy Hansen. He's a Canadian astronaut. He's never flown before. Uh, but he's getting that seat because Canada has played such a crucial role in America's space program. They built the robot arm that really helped build the International Space Station, and they're building another arm for a station NASA wants to put in orbit around the moon. So a very accomplished crew, a very exciting mission. And as you say, if all goes well, perhaps they'll fly beyond the moon at the end of next year. So let's talk about all going well. Artemis II obviously is trying to advance on Artemis I. Uh, tell us what had to be modified in order for uh, Artemis II to actually accommodate humans. Well, you know, Artemis I, one of the major goals there was just to test that giant SLS moon rocket that NASA's built, most powerful rocket in the world. This will be, Artemis II will be the first flight with astronauts on board that rocket. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, but really, the Orion capsule itself, the one they launched on the Artemis One mission, didn't carry the life support systems and all the uh, navigation and computer gear that a crew would need. So this time around, uh, they're really decking it out as it will be for future flights to the moon with all astronauts. Uh, they're going to practice rendezvous procedures in a big Earth orbit. I say big. One, I, one side of that orbit is going to be about 40,000 miles up. Uh, and they're going to do all of that before they finally head to the moon. And in this case, it's going to be a little like Apollo 13. They're not going to orbit the moon. It's called a free return trajectory. They'll go behind the moon, and then the lunar gravity will bend their trajectory around and bring them back to Earth after about 10 days. So it's Love really a shakedown shot. flight. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. And it's 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 kind of, think, think of it as a, as a shakedown flight before the <laughs> Artemis III mission, which is the one that will send two astronauts down to the moon's south pole. You know, as we've been covering Artemis, I mean, there's always big challenges to overcome. Of course, besides that uh, technology to support life and keep those astronauts alive, uh, what are the biggest challenges that they'll need to overcome this time around? Well, you know, one of the, one of the constant challenges in deep space exploration is radiation exposure, you know, and oh, mm -hmm. we're protected down here on Earth by the ozone layer, Earth's magnetic field, but once you head out to the moon, you're kind of exposed to solar radiation from solar storms, et cetera. So that's a constant concern. Uh, but really, it's just the technology. When you think about committing yourself to a quarter million mile journey one way, you know, it's all got to work. Uh, the spacecraft is being tested, in this case, for the very first time with all that critical life support equipment that just has to work. And so, you know, they, they believe it will. They've done a lot of testing, but, you know, you never know till you go do it. And that's the goal of this flight, to really, really put that Orion capsule through its paces. Yeah, For All Mankind had a great storyline about the radiation uh, dangers that, that can exist there on the moon. Bill Harwood, uh, always great to see you take the incredible human possibility and fantasy of space travel and bringing it home to us here. Bill, yeah. thanks. D down to Earth lingo. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> that we can understand. Thank you.